So far we've spoken about products and promotions, but we don't actually have anything physical which would help you visualize what I'm thinking. So I think in this one, what we'll do is we'll start to build our schema and then things should start to make uh, a bit of sense uh, when we're actually talking about these things. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience. And if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. So the two main entities we're thinking about here are product and promotion. I've created some notes. Uh, we'll deal with product first. Very simple, it's just gonna have the identifier which we've spoke about so far and we've been using that in the URI. And then a price uh, which we'll keep in integers, we'll keep it very atomic. So if we were using euros, then the price would be in cents and then it's up to the client application how it actually deals with that. And then we have promotion. So I've, I've come up with five fields here. Um, ID, uh, the name of the promotion. So for example, Black Friday half price sale. Type, we'll speak about that in a second. Adjustment, i.e. what are we going to do to the original price? Uh, what amount are we going to use to adjust it by? And then criteria, which will be a, like a rule of how to apply this adjustment. So I've got an example here which should help uh, you make sense of this. And so for this one, we have an ID of one and then the name of Black Friday half price sale. So the type, this is going to be the important part because this is going to um, let our service know how it should manipulate this value. So for this one, it's going to be a date range multiplier and that will make more sense in a minute. And the adjustment will be 0 0.5. So if it's a multiplier and the adjustment is 0 0.5, you're going to take the original price and multiply it by 0 0.5. And then the criteria, because we've decided to call this a date range multiplier, will be if uh, the date on which the request is being made is in between uh, the 11th, uh, 25th of the 11th, 2022, and 28th of the 11th, 2022. We'll have a look at one more just to help this sink in. So this one we've given an ID of two. Uh, the name is voucher OU812. So say you have a voucher code which is o, which has a value OU812. And then for this one, we're gonna say it's gonna be a fixed price voucher. So if you have this voucher code, you will get the product for a certain fixed price. And so there's no multiplying going on. It's just a fixed uh, price. So the adjustment in this case, it's going to be 100, so you'll get it for 100 cents. And then the criteria is that you have a voucher code with a value OU812. So uh, thinking about this, what we'll need to do is so come up with some mechanism which is able to look at the type and then apply the correct uh, filtering or apply the correct adjustment to the original price based on that. So should be an interesting challenge. Now let's have a look at a diagram of the schema itself. Initially, you might think of something like this. So we have our product here, and then we have our promotion. And so this is a many to one, many promotions to one product. But if you think about this design, it means that we'd have to have a product ID on our promotion. And what would that mean? It would mean that this promotion can only ever apply to a single product, but that's not what we want. We want to have promotions which can apply to different products. And so we're gonna get rid of that one. And what I've come up with is this instead. So we could have a simple many to many where we just have a uh, intermediary table in the middle with a product ID and a promotion ID uh, between our product and promotion. But what I thought we'd do, uh, which might be a better design, is to actually model that relationship and have an actual entity which represents uh, the relationship between the two. And by doing that, it means we can add extra fields. So for example, we might want to have a valid two. In other words, how long uh, or until what date should this promotion be applicable to this product? Which is a nice little design, I think. And then the relationship uh, between these is a many to one. So many product promotions uh, can apply to a single product and many product promotions can apply to a single promotion. And so the other fields that we have in there are obviously the product ID, which refers to the product and then the promotion ID, which will refer to the promotion. So this way we can have uh, many promotions which relate to many 
products. Hope that makes sense. Let's now go over and start creating our schema using entities. The first thing we're going to need to do is actually get doctrine ORM. So we can do that with composer require doctrine. And so that will all install. And then we have uh, an interesting question at the bottom here. So it says the recipe for this package contains some Docker information. This may create or update a Docker Compose YAML or update Docker file if it exists. Do you want to include Docker configuration from recipes? I'm actually going to say no here, but I am toying with the idea of using Docker uh, to create my database because I might want to use other services which ain't installed on my computer. And so if I decide to go down that route, then we might as well uh, add them all to Docker. If you don't have Docker installed or you don't want to use Docker for whatever reason, then by all means use um, whichever database you have installed on your computer, Postgres, MySQL, or whatever. For the time being, I'm I am going to say no. Uh, I do have my SQL on my uh, machine. I also have Postgres on it, but like I say, I'm thinking of using Docker for that. But if I do, I'll show you how we can do that. We're not going to actually be creating databases in this recording anyway. For this one, we're just going to create our entities. So let's clear the terminal, and then I'm going to say PHP bin console make entity and first off we'll make our product so this one should be nice and simple new property name and so the first property or the only property we're going to add to this is going to be the price which we said would be an integer so it says field type start typing integer then I can hit tab because it gives me some auto completion hit enter can this field be null in the database uh, no we'll definitely need a price Add another property. We don't need to add another property. Our product is complete. So now let's go and make our promotion. So PHP pin console make column entity promotion. First off, we'll have name, and that will be a string. Field length 255 is fine. Can this field be null in the database? No, it can't. Add another property. So this time it will be type. Again, this will be string. We'll stick with 255. And again, this can't be null. And then we're going to go with adjustment. And this will be a float. Can this field be null? We'll say no. Then add another property. So this is criteria. We said this is going to be JSON. Can this field be null in the database? So again, we'll say no for that. And then that's all our properties for our promotion. And then we just need to add our product promotion entity, which is going to model the relationship between the two. And so for this, our main properties are going to be relations. So the first one, which we'll call product. And for field type, use relation. And then it'll ask you which entity this should be related to. So that is going to be product. And then it will ask you the relation type. So we said that this is going to be a many to one because there will be, let's go and have a look here. Each product promotion relates to one product. So that's the one that we want. Is the product promotion product property allowed to be null? We shall say no. Do you want to add a new property to product so that you can access or update product promotion objects from it? E.g. product get pro product promotions. I think that might be quite useful so I shall say yes. New field name inside of product, product promotions, that sounds okay. Do you want to automatically delete orphaned product promotion objects. The default setting here is no, is no, but I probably mean yes, but I'm going to stick with the default. I'll just hit enter there. Add another property. So this time we want promotion. Field type again will be a relation. This will relate to a promotion. Again, the relation type is many to one. Can the property be null? We'll say no. 
Do you want to add a new property to promotion so that you can access update product promotion objects from it? E.g. promotion, get product promotions. I don't think there's any point in having that. I don't think it's anything that I would ever use. So I'll say no. Do I want to add another property? Yes, I do. So I want to add a valid two, which will be a date time. Can this field be null? We'll say yes, because by having a null valid two, it means that we haven't specified that, it want, that we want this promotion to end for this product at a certain time. So that'll be um, the best design for this, I think. Add another property. No, we're done with that so far. If we do want to add more properties to, to this later on, that's no problem. We can come back and do that. But let's stick to the design which we set out with from the beginning. And so now all we need to do is just actually go over and inspect our entities to make sure they're being created and they look the way that we expect them to. On our product we have an ID which is an integer, we have a price which, which is an integer and then we have a one to many relationship so this is the inverse of the, um, the one on the product promotion so one product to many product promotions so that is correct and then we have some getters and setters so this one's fairly simple let's go and have a look at our promotion and so we have an ID a name which is a string the type which is a string the adjustment which is a float and then the criteria which as you can see here it's saying that the column type in the database will be JSON but uh, in our entity it's actually defined as an array which is correct let's have a look at our product promotion and so here we have an ID and then we have a many to one relationship uh, so many product promotions to one product when we go to execute the command to create the SQL what it will do is it will create a column called or a field called product ID and the same will happen here so we have a many to one relationship with promotion so one or many product promotions to one promotion again this will be a join column and it will be given the name promotion ID and then this last one was just the date time which we added uh, we said it can be nullable and it is called valid two so I know I've gone through that fairly quickly there but I've done a lot of stuff of on doctrine on my youtube channel um, just have a go through have a look through these in your own time you'll see that all the relationships etc make sense so these are just mapping or will map to tables in our database but we haven't actually um, executed the commands to create the sql yet so we haven't created any tables for our database yet or any X sql for those tables but that's what we'll do in the next one if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. And also, if you're interested in my full-length courses, then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech. I'll leave a link on the screen and in the description.